I'm sitting here working by the Christmas tree this morning. It's so rainy outside and my little color work mittens are sitting next to me, calling my name and telling me to do just one more row. <laughs> I'm trying to resist and keep working. <laughs> to my Huga Crow. Today is Tuesday, December 19th, <laughs> and thought I'd sit down and chat a little bit about my week, my knitting, and then at the end I am going to do a yarn haul. This is yarn that I, I purchased and was shipped like two months ago, and I keep forgetting to share it, so I figured it's been kind of a festivities light week this week, so now would be the perfect chance. <laughs> I have my two ongoing knitting projects, the um, Midwinter Knot Mittens by, a, a, I'm going to get her name right this time, Nina Pomerenke, <laughs> uh, who is a crafter's tale on YouTube. And I finished this mitten last year. I'm knitting this one this year, and I'm just chugging along. I thought that I'd be finished with these. I thought I'd like finish them up in a week, but that has not been the case. So I'm um, still working. The writing is coming together on this side of the mitten. It's, a, it's going to say Got Yul. Um, and on this side, I'm working on the little fence. I'm about to be finished with the fence and soon I'll be moving on to do the, like the house. So the I'm using Ladderback Jacquard and it is going really well. You can see the difference in how the floats look. That is what the difference is between the two techniques. Um, but yeah, it's been a really fun project to try out that new skill on. Um, I'm still not super happy with just, so I'm doing just like regular color work in this area and I'm still not super happy with it. I think I hold my floats too loose, which is interesting because everyone tells you like, oh, don't pull your floats too tight or whatever. And I think, yeah, I have the opposite. <laughs> Anyways, those are still in the works. I am hoping to finish those this week. Um, I don't want to take this whole situation with me when we fly to Iowa. And then the other project I'm working on is my Traveler Shell. And I did put a little stitch marker in to... Put a little stitch marker in here to show my progress since the last uh, Vlogmas episode. And it hasn't been quite a week um, since that, since I put this in, but I've knit like two, two and a half inches uh, on the traveler shell. So definitely fallen behind on this one, but. Um, We'll get there. <laughs> we'll see. I'm. Uh, I took this to a concert last night. We were um, given tickets to a, a choral concert. Chanticleer is the the choir. If you are into <laughs> choral music, some folks from church who know that Joel really, really loves choral music, weren't able to go to the concert. And so they called us uh, and asked if we would like the tickets. And we said, let's see if we can get a babysitter. And then yes. <laughs> so the concert was awesome. It's an all men's choir. And I think that they mostly sing in California. I know they're California based, but if you have the opportunity to see them, 
um, you have never heard men sing higher than you have until you go to a Chanticleer concert. Um, I, before going to the concert last year, whatever year we went, I did not know what a contratenor is. If you don't know what a contratenor is, you should look it up because it is amazing to behold. <laughs> Anyways, I took my traveler shell there and I got some really awesome progress. I think I knit at least an inch during the concert and then uh, we also we parked in the parking garage and it turned out that the Kings who are our Sacramento basketball team their game let out at exactly the same time as the concert and we were on the top level of the parking garage <laughs> and it took us 45 minutes to get out of the garage so I got a lot more knitting done in the car <laughs> while I was trying to leave <laughs> uh, Joel was driving just to clarify so those are my project updates we did go to two Christmas parties on Friday night uh, back to back <laughs> one was uh, some friends from church and it was like a sip and sing so that was really fun um, and it was our first time going to their house and then the second one was the church staff party Joel is a staff member at our church and so we came late but we were able to still get the food and also um, we did a white elephant gift exchange this week has been mostly like recuperating and trying to get back to a base level of normality. Um, Joel works so much in December as you can imagine working at a church and Elliot was only able to go to daycare two days last week so that was a lot just managing her at home. I mentioned it in the last episode but even when I'm not actively watching her, if she's at home and I'm working from home, it is just not the same vibe <laughs> as when I'm working from home and she's at daycare. She's been able to go to daycare so far this week and I am hoping that that holds and she doesn't get all the little bugs that are going around um, because I, yeah, really need her to be in daycare <laughs> this week. <laughs> so I can focus on work because I'm gonna be off next week and we're we're flying to Iowa so I really don't want her to be sick on the plane that would be bad and I guess that we wouldn't really be able to go because that's like not not cool to bring a sick person on a plane uh ooh. I haven't thought about that and I'm gonna just let that anxiety leave my brain and we're gonna talk about yarn <laughs> instead oh wait no first I wanted to uh, to just mention that for those of you who don't live in California I know this was like really surprising to Joel when he moved here from the Midwest but December and January in California is citrus season so it's so beautiful to take walks in the neighborhood because citrus trees are all over and we were given by our neighbors across the street they have lemon tree on their property and then a lemon tree in their neighbor's property that comes over their fence and we do actually have a law in California that if a fruit tree hangs over your fence the fruit on that side of the fence line belongs to you, which is very funny that, that that's a law, but <laughs> it's very beneficial for us because we have an orange tree that, um, two orange trees actually that hang over uh, our side of the fence. So yeah, it's super great. We, we get to have those oranges, but our neighbors gifted us a giant grocery bag of Meyer lemons. If you haven't had Meyer lemons, I'm sorry. Um, 
they're just like five million times better than any other lemon in my humble opinion maybe i'll make a little honey lemon tea later on and start enjoying the bounty of citrus that is about to truly just come full force <laughs> between the oranges that we have in our backyard we have a kumquat tree that actually put on it's newer and it put on some fruit this year so that's cool my parents have an orange tree there's lemon trees everywhere our neighbors across the street have a grapefruit tree that is super productive so in maybe a month or so probably they'll have a ton of grapefruit sitting out on the street <laughs> for people to grab I don't know anyone who has a mandarin tree, but the mandarins at the grocery store are always, you know, super sale this time of year. So excited for the citrus bounty that is about to unfold in, in Sacramento. Okay, now onto onto yarn, <laughs> something that we can all enjoy, not just you know California specific. So this is the haul of yarn <laughs> that I purchased during the Drops Alpaca party. So if you're not familiar with Drops, they do a lot of really budget friendly yarns. And some of them have synthetic fibers in them. Some of them are all natural fibers. And there's, I don't know if there's any retailers in the States for drops, but I purchased them from Wool Warehouse, which is from England. And the shipping is not that expensive. And it, I mean, it takes like, a couple weeks but it's not like a month to get the yarn so if you're interested in dro drops yarn in general I would recommend and the reason why I bought this yarn is because I needed the um, fluff this is brushed alpaca silk and I needed this for the traveler shell so I went on the website and saw that they were having their alpaca party which I believe they have every year and I don't think it's still running at this point, but what it is is every yarn of theirs that has alpaca in it, they sell it at a 40% discount, which is a significant discount. Um, I'm not sure if you can see Nessa back here. She is having a little bath. Um, they sell it at a 40% discount, which is good because well it's a really great deal and the yarn is already quite affordable so I'm gonna show you what I got and all of it was is alpaca and none of the yarns are ones that I've bought before I, I really this is the sweater number 11 and this is knit in drops alpaca air <laughs> in the color wheat and so I this one does have alpaca in it did I say drops alpaca air no that's not right it's just drops air I think <laughs> anyways it does have alpaca in it it's a blown yarn but I wanted to try some of their other yarns um, since I hadn't before so the first one I have here is their alpaca boucle and this is this one does have some synthetic fibers in it it is 80% alpaca 15% wool and 5% polyamide and you're gonna get 153 yards out of a, a 50 gram ball so as you can see it's nice and 
loopy and looks super fluffy. I don't know what the color is because they don't write it on here. So cool. Uh, <laughs> it is color 2020. Um, but my plan for these yarns, I got six of them, is to knit a Sophie shawl. And this is not an original idea. I think it was Mare Bear Maid um, was doing this. And she was doing it because she saw someone on Instagram <laughs> who did this. And so I did find that person, the original person on Ravelry. I found their project and I will link it in the description. But it is just the Sophie shawl. But instead of using a regular yarn, you use boucle. And it ends up being super like fluffy, fuzzy, teddy bear um, style Sophie shawl. So I'm not sure when I'm going to cast this on. I've been, I've been looking at this yarn and super tempted to just do it and maybe have this as my car project. But I do have a Sophie shawl or Sophie scarf on, on the needles in my car. So maybe I should finish that first. But yeah, that is the alpaca boucle very 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 excited next is this drops flora so this one is like it's a fingering weight yarn and truly such a budget friendly <laughs> yarn if you are looking for like i don't know maybe a substitute for tr any fingering weight yarn honestly it is not like a sock yarn. It is all natural fibers and yeah, so it's 65% wool and 35% alpaca. So it's definitely going to give some drape. It's not going to be super um, wooly, but yeah, it just feels like nice and smooth. There's no itch to it, but it's also not like merino wool or anything it's color 23 uh but yeah this beautiful i want to say it's like misty forest or... <laughs> but this beautiful green i bought five balls and my plan is to make the knitting for olive bell blouse for elliot she had the bell blouse in um, like a smaller size and it was honestly such a great versatile piece for her wardrobe because it works as so it's a like a three quarter length blouse but because it's three quarter length and has like a nice like a-line shape it can work when it's a little bigger it works as a dress and then as your kid grows they like grow into its intended fit which is like the three quarter length sleeve and short blouse and I'm, i don't remember what size i knit but she was wearing it when she was like one month old i think we took her one month old photo in it and she wore it again when she was, I want to say eight months old, nine months old, and it worked both times. So um, because it was so great and versatile, I want to knit it again um, in a larger size so she can have it for this coming year. So that's my plan for the flora and this green flora. And then I, I went ahead because I figured I'd have some scraps from that. Um, so I bought the um this brown and cream color as well and i'm going to knit a pattern which now i'm forgetting the name of but i'm going to use the scraps from this um and it's i'll have to put it up but it's like a squirrel color work mitten um and i believe she knits it in drops flora so i just thought you know what while i'm at it and these were like <laughs> cheap. <laughs> well, while I'm at it, I'll just give the two extra balls so that I have these. And in the sample, it's like orange is the little 
contrast color, but I'll switch the orange to this cool, like greeny blue. Awesome. The last thing that I got is a whole bunch of drops sky. And this is a chainette yarn. Let's see. This one has some synthetic in it as well. It is 74% alpaca, 18% polyamide, and 8% wool. So really alpaca heavy chainette yarn. And I got many, many balls of this. <laughs> and my plan is to knit the traveler hoodie. Um, that this yarn is, I want to say a DK and the hoodie calls for sport, but I feel like chain net and blown yarns can really compress down to be knit at a smaller gauge. And if you look at it, it's pretty thin. So that is my plan for this. And I got this one ball in a, like a light pink. This was um, cherry sorbet and peach something, I think. <laughs> but I got this one in a lighter color to do the drawstring. Um, and then I'll probably use the rest of it to knit like a baby, probably like a baby bonnet or baby hat as a gift. Um, so yeah, that is my big old bag of yarn that I keep forgetting <laughs> to share with you. Uh, and hopefully, we'll, we'll see if I stick to my project plans or if those evolve over time. Um, but this, I think, is going to be my last, let's be honest, I, I am planning on doing like a stash down challenge uh, it won't be a, a full no buy year because I did invest, invest, <laughs> invest. I indulged <laughs> in a sock subscription from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. It's my like Christmas gift, Mother's Day gift, um, maybe my birthday gift as well uh, for the coming year um, because it's definitely a bit splurgy for me but looking at different sock subscription options it was actually like quite reasonable in terms of hand dyed yarn and that sort of like subscription based thing so very excited about that um and the one other thing that i am planning on it's not anything specific that I'm planning on acquiring, but we are going to Denmark next fall. So I'm kind of like bargaining with myself um, and I, my planned stash acquisition situation is going to be however many like units of yarn, so balls of yarn, whether they be, I might, I might just change it to like, however many grams of yarn I get out of my stash so I knit up and use or even like give away etc I am going to allow myself to buy half the amount when we go to Denmark because I know that there's no way I'll be able to resist. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to put like a parameter on myself so that I am still whittling down my stash because it has gotten to a point where um, it makes me a little stressed out instead of super, it doesn't make me that stressed out. I still love my stash, but thinking about like I, the projects I'll actually be able to accomplish I just want to do all of the knitting and I simply don't have the time and um, I would like my stash to reflect more realistic goals for myself <laughs> in 2024. We're almost there. Okay, so I'm going to leave you here. I don't think there was anything else I'm going to talk about. I'm going to be heading to my stash.
holiday party in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a great week and I will catch up with you next week. Thank you.